morning, Saint B. I will uh, ask you to turn to the back of your bulletin for today's announcements. They're going to be a little bit, there's some extra notes with these announcements that aren't printed in the bulletin. So pay attention and write down things if there's anything you need to remember. That goes for me too. I mean, I, I'm just going to take this tape away. So February 19th, President's Day, the office will be closed. So February 23rd, we are starting a family game night, one Friday night, usually the third Friday of each month. This coming Friday is our first one, starting at 6 p.m. We will order pizza as soon as we see how many are coming and split the cost. Bring your favorite board games to play and a friend or two. This is no age limit. We will have a fun time with all. March 8th, United Women in Faith Night Group Circle Meeting will be at 6.30 p.m. March 10th, United Women in Faith Self Denial Unit Meeting from 2 to 4 p.m. March 12th, United Women in Faith Andorra Circle Meeting will be at 10.30 a.m. Wandering Park Figuring Out Faith with Peter. This Lent, we will look for ourselves in the stepping stone of Peter's story. We will reflect on the stages of our faith journeys as well as who and what has shaped us along the way. We will engage with this theme during worship, Bible study, and online discussion via our church Facebook group. As we wander, let us tune our hearts to sing God's grace. May we rest in streams of mercy, never ceasing. The 2024 Church Directory don't forget to sign up for our church directly so everyone knows our church family. If you are unable to make one of our scheduled appointments, please contact the church office, Phyllis Haddock, or Margaret Fisher, and we will be sure to fit you in. The staff pictures are being taken on Thursday, February 22nd. We do need everyone to participate. A church cookbook, food, Faith and Fellowship is our theme this year, so we are going to be putting together a cookbook since we haven't had one since around 2002. And we need everyone in the church to provide two or three or more recipes for our cookbook by April 5. We hope to have one published before Mother's Day in May, but need at least 150 recipes. There are baskets at both entrances for you to drop your recipes in for being published. Now we have our seasoned group who do not drive after dark but need to share in food, faith, and fellowship also. So we are going to start with our first bingo gathering on March 7th at 10 to 11.30 a.m. <coughs> in Heritage Hall, followed by lunch out for our first fun time and open to all who can participate. We will start with one day a month, and if enough people are interested, we may have it more often. If you need a ride, contact the church office, Diane Austin or Margaret Fisher. Be sure to read the March newsletter coming out next Sunday for the exciting things going on at St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. We need each other. As always, please sign your attendance pad at the end of the day so we know that you are here to worship with us today. It is a joy to be in worship with all of you this morning on this first Sunday in Advent. Whether this is your first time or you've been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Come in. Feel your feet on the floor. Settle your worries. Take a deep breath. Dust the cobwebs from your ears. Relax the tension in your jaw. For Christ is here. God has never stopped seeing us. We have been found. Let us find God in return. Let us worship the God of the Lord. Amen. I invite 
invite you now to stand as you're able as we sing together hymn number 400, Come Now Pass.
today's scripture reading can be found in Psalm chapter 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you to be put to shame. Do not let me, do not, let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me, for your goodness' sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. You may remain seated as we sing together again, You Sought Me, which can be found in the bulletin on your insert, and it will also be on the slides. Margaret will play it through fully once. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, and the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and talked to crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water, and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. 
Yet, if you say so, I will let down the net. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. one of I wonder as I wander 
verse says, I wonder as I wander out under the sky how Jesus the Savior did come for to die. For ordinary, for poor ordinary people like you and like I, I wonder as I wander out under the sky. Throughout this season of Lent, we are wandering with, the, with Peter as he witnesses the story of Christ unfold. And we can see ourselves in Peter's story. And like Peter, we are invited to be, bring the best and the worst parts of ourselves to God. This morning, we see Jesus call Simon Peter and James and John, sons of Zebedee, we heard this story in Mark a few weeks ago, though Luke's account is slightly different. In Mark, Jesus sees them on the boat and says, Come, follow me, and immediately they drop their nets, abandon their boats, and don't look back. I have to say that Luke's account is a little bit easier for me to relate to. I see myself in Peter, whose first impulse when told to cast his nets on the other side after an unsuccessful night of fishing was that to tell Jesus he didn't think it was going to work. But he does it anyway. And as they drag their fish-laden boats back, Peter's first response was to drop down at Jesus' feet to proclaim his unworthiness of this good fortune. The economy we find was largely made up by the fishing industry. For those who were not successful fishermen often became destitute. It was a diverse community that was home to those struggling with poverty, and those are the ones who Jesus sought. Jesus sought Peter, who was likely feeling panic as he had not caught any fish. Jesus sought Peter, who could feel his livelihood slipping away with every passing cast that did not bring anything up. Jesus sought Peter, whose protest was laden with so many messages. In her artist statement from the painting titled River of Grace, Lyle Wingarity writes, There are so many messages within his protest. I'm not prepared. I'm not capable. I'm not deserving. I'm not faithful enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not the type you're looking for. Have you ever found yourself saying these things in response to a new calling or to an abundant gift of grace? There's this psychological concept that is called imposter syndrome. And it's this psychological occurrence in which people doubt their skills, talents, or accomplishments and have a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Despite external evidence of their competence, those experiencing imposter syndrome do not believe they deserve the success or luck. can't help but feel like maybe that's a little bit what Peter is feeling. And maybe that it's a little bit of what I feel. Who am I? Who are we to be called by Jesus? Who are we to be sought by Jesus? Who are we but sinners in desperate need of grace? Who am I to be called by Jesus when around me there are more qualified and talented people he could call? 
Who am I to receive the endless love and grace of God? Garrity continues in her artist statement. In this image, the bursting nets transform into a river of grace, meandering through the composition of Peter's life. The river pours into Peter's hands, but he can't quite grasp the fullness of this gift and calling quite yet. So most of it just rushes by. The river represents how his journey with Christ begins and ends with an abundant catch of fish. He is forever tethered to the overflowing love of God. So who are we? We are ones also tethered to the overflowing love of God. We are called. We are sought by Christ who will not leave our sides. We are sinners redeemed by the grace of God. We are God's beloved. We are created in God's own image. And we are invited to join the community that Jesus is forming. We hear the psalmist say, show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. We cannot fully grasp the fullness of God. We cannot fully grasp this calling that has been placed on our lives. But even though we cannot fully comprehend, cannot fully grasp this, that does not mean that we don't have a place to live in the kingdom of God. Jesus sought Peter, wandering heart and all. And not only did Jesus seek Peter, Jesus was there to catch him, to walk beside him, to wash his feet, to offer love. Peter's wandering heart ebbed and flowed, pushed away and pulled close. Just as Jesus sought Peter, Jesus is seeking us. Jesus catches us. Jesus walks beside us. Jesus washes our feet. Jesus offers us love. And as our wandering hearts ebb and flow, push away and pull close, May we find glimpses of Christ on this journey for which we have been called and equipped. I wonder as I wander out under the sky how Jesus the Savior did come forth to die for poor ordinary people like you and like I. I wonder as I wander out under the sky. Thanks. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. Let us pray. O oh God, pour your blessings upon me and our gifts. Gifts that have been graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to further your kingdom on earth as we live into our call. In Jesus' name.
for ser a service to celebrate her life will be this Saturday, February 24th at, McN at McReynolds, Nave, and Larson. Our full prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. We also want to lift up Caroline Hendrickson in addition to Continuing to grieve the loss of Jen, she also has been diagnosed with COVID earlier this week, and so we keep her in our prayers. Are there other joys or concerns? Welcome. chance to gather together, to dive into your word, to listen closely to what you might be saying to us. Oh God, we give you thanks that you are always seeking us out, that no matter how far away we run, no matter where we go, you are always seeking us. Oh God, we lift up to you all of the prayers of our hearts. Prayers in the midst of loss. Prayers for comfort, prayers, and times of uncertainty and unknowing. Oh God, we also give you thanks for the abundance of joy that surrounds us. for laughter, for squeals of delight, for singing. We give you thanks that you are in it all. Oh God, as we begin this Lenten journey, as we begin the journey to the cross, we ask that you remind us of your presence with us. That on this journey, we do not walk alone. And when we feel like we are wandering away, pull us close. Oh God, we pray these things and all things in your Son's holy name. And it is he who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the land is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our 
service this morning and ready to stand as you're able as we sing together from the faith we sing 2130, the sun. Thank you. 